Hi, I'm Anne-Marie from Brambleberry. Thanks so much for watching today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these amazing bath fizzies made with Brambleberry's hexagon molds. Bath fizzies are really easy to make. If you've never done it before, this is the project for you. To make these a little more fun and interesting, we're giving it kind of a crystal look by adding a little bit of eco glitter and a little bit of salt and some color to add texture interest. And sure, that salt's great for you in the bathtub too. To make these even more skin loving, we're also adding some extract, so orchid extract, which is in fractionated coconut oil, and a little bit of shea butter. Finally, these are scented with Moonchild fragrance, which is a really, well, it's hard to describe, but let me give it a try. It's got some bergamot in it, it's got some grapefruit in it, it has some Earl Grey tea notes in it. It is a really ethereal fragrance. It's what you think about when you're like, Moonchild. One last ingredient I wanna hit on is our polysorbate 80. And you're like, what's polysorbate 80? Polysorbate 80 is an emulsifier. What that means is it binds water to oil. So when you hear about the shea butter and you're like, yes, that's great for my skin, but doesn't that just go to the top of the tub and give me oily tub? Sometimes it can. The polysorbate 80 actually makes the water in the tub mix with the shea butter. So it stays evenly suspended in the water and bonus, won't give you ring around the tub. So I love using polysorbate 80 in all of my bath fizzies. It is optional though, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. Let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is make sure my workspace is clean, but while I'm doing that, I'm gonna melt my shea butter down in the microwave on like eh, 30 second burst. I don't want it to get too warm. While my shea butter is melting, I'm just gonna get my salts ready. So this is just some dead sea salt, and I'm gonna put just a, yeah, a dish and a dash, just a little bit of this eco glitter, little bit of this purple in. And remember, you can always add more, but you cannot take it out. So I always go a little lighter than I think I might need, just because I never want to overcolor anything. This is such a small amount of color that it won't discolor your bathtub, but it's pretty easy to discolor the bath if you add too much color. I love the way this glitter really glistens and makes this really look like crystals. So now that I'm done with that, we're just gonna put it to the side. Now that I've made my topping, I'm gonna to take my melted shea butter and I'm gonna add my extracts, my polysorbate 80, and my fragrance. I'm adding all this orchid extract, so that's a full ounce of fractionated coconut oil. Mm, skin loving fractionated coconut oil. And then 0.3 ounces of the polysorbate 80, so that's one of the reasons I am weighing. So I'm just gonna weigh this out, putting tear on here, and that polysorbate 80, again, totally optional, but I really love it because then I don't get that ring around the tub that happens with really oily products in the tub. And it also helps to prevent slips later on in the tub. And finally, I'm gonna do 0.6 ounces of this Moonchild, which again, I just love. I think it smells like so much of like a, a just an, an adult Earl Grey tea with those bergamot notes and those grapefruit notes in there. And of course, we always go by weight whenever we're doing things when we can. And so in this case, 0.6 ounces doesn't seem like that much, but this fragrance is so strong, it is going to scent those bath fizzies perfectly. Just gonna give this a quick stir, and then it's time to make our bath fizzies. Now that this is all stirred up, I'm gonna put this to the side and then put gloves on so I can work with the powders. So why gloves? Nothing we're using here is toxic. Well, I really like my nail polish and what happens when you do baking soda and citric acid together is that it scours whatever it's in, right? Like there's a reason people use sodium bicarbonate to clean stains and clean counters. It will also scour your nail polish when you're doing this. It's almost like an exfoliant and I'd like my nail polish to stick around. So I'm putting the gloves on for that reason. Plus, if you are making this product to sell, you have to be working in a clean kitchen environment anyway, so you gotta be working with gloves. So consider that when you're thinking about making your bath fizzies. Got my citric acid here, and I have my baking soda here. The baking soda naturally clumps up no matter what you do. And so unfortunately or fortunately, you gotta run it through a sieve to get rid of any clumps. And if you don't do that, what ends up happening is you end up with this kind of uneven mixture that makes little protrusions in your bath fizzies or little wart looking things. They don't hurt the bath fizzy, but they don't look that appealing. And that's probably not the look you're going for. So it's worth it for this extra step to just run the entire thing through a sieve. Otherwise you just end up with huge amounts of clumps. Only gets up from uh, uh, oh. 
This has all been sifted, and now it's time to add my citric acid. I'm not sifting my citric acid because that is pretty free flowing and it doesn't really like pull moisture to it, so it doesn't clump up as much. Now all I'm doing is mixing that in really well, and this might tickle your nose, and if it tickles your nose, put a mask on. It doesn't really bother me, but lots of people like to wear a mask when they're working with this product. Next, I'm gonna add all of my liquid. Now remember, my liquid has everything I need. The fragrance is in there, the polysorbate 80s in there, the shea butter's in there, and the extract is in there. I'm just gonna add it slowly, really slowly, because I want this to get evenly mixed. When I used to make bath fizzies uh, for production back in the day, I had a giant Hobart mixer that used to be done for giant bread batches and stuff, and I'd have that going the whole time I was adding all my oils. And so I'm trying to mimic that evenness of stirring. So now that all my liquids are in, I'm just gonna do a really quick consistency and texture check. So when you, it's kind of like making a pie crust, you want it to stick together and not fall apart when you squeeze really hard. This is actually perfect. Now I am working in Washington state right now and we may have a more humid environment than you. If you're in a really hot, dry desert state, this might not be sticking together nearly as well. If that's the case, get a little witch hazel, just spray a little witch hazel in here and keep mixing so you get the consistency you want. So that way your bath fizzy hardens up really nice and sticks together. This is perfect consistency. So I'm just gonna take my molds and I'm gonna put just a little bit of that salt in the bottom, kind of in the corner, keeping in mind that the more salt you put in, the more it will, might potentially come off when you actually try and take your bath fizzies out, or it might be a little bit too thick and then your bath fizzy kind of won't stick together in that area. So just be thinking, you want this to be an accent, not the entire bath fizzy. And I really like it when it's in one corner, so then it kind of shows a really fun design element as opposed to being throughout the entire thing. Once you have that in, go ahead and just plop what you think is the right amount of bath fizzy in there. Press down with your hands and you are pretty much done. One last step though, we wanna make sure that we have this entire area free and clear of bath fizzy material so that way this will shut easily. I'm just gonna keep filling my bath fizzies up. And then just one more thing, you wanna make sure that these dry probably overnight before you close them, because you want them to evaporate just enough that they are gonna be hard. That way you can use them the next day or pop them out the next day. So these are made just a couple days ago and you can either, you can of course just you know pop them closed and package them and give them away or hang them for sale, or I'm just gonna pop them out and then they're ready to use right away. And when you pop them out, if you wash this, you can always reuse it. And this just looks fantastic. I love how that eco glitter really gives it a nice amount of shine. And of course, it's not gonna clog drains or kill fish, so that's a real positive. Thanks so much for watching today's video. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe below and of course, give it a thumbs up. If you subscribe, you'll be notified each and every time a new video comes out on our channel. Until next time, happy soaping. Here we go. Do -do 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 -do. Brambleberry's new hexagonal. I like that she's unapologetically trying all the time. Well, yeah, if you I mean, do it again. I'm just gonna put this back together. Do you wanna start the fizzing reaction early? <laughs> Which is again, hmm, doesn't smell like anything. I don't know why I smell it. <laughs> Point three, or am I doing a whole ounce? adding that into the corner. Shea butter? What yeah. is it? <laughs> right? Everybody thinks of this so they think we're <laughs> That's one of those lines that when I see it later, I'll be like, what? Uh, like, uh, from, uh, 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 mm, 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 mm. No.